Mä synnyin Kaarinassa Suomessa 1920 toukokuun 8. päivä. Aloin piirtää heti kun kynä pysyi kädessäni. My parents were school teacher and uh, so uh, my childhood was uh, in a very protected old fashioned Christian way. I mean, at the time we didn't want to go out or, or do something outdoors, so we sat home and, and draw all kind of silly children's fantasies. I think it was just having a good time doing that. So the decision came much later when I was in high school, and I started thinking seriously that I wanted to become an artist. So uh, my experience in war was first with the. Uh, the guys, the Finnish guys, which were serving the country. And uh, then later in the last year of the war, our war, which ended before a bit earlier than the, the Second World War, uh, so the, the German army came to Finland. They wanted to, to uh, take Leningrad, the position, and, and they already surrounded from south and, and west. And so they came to Finland and tried also to make it to the north side or around, which never had, never succeeded really. But that meant that, that I contact I got contact with some German soldiers, officers and so on. Then after that war was over for us and we lost the war, the Soviet army came there for several years to control that we made their life the way they wanted us to do. So that meant that, that they had some military patrols on the streets every night and so on. And also they were cruising the Russian parks. I feel that they were from somewhere very far from Siberia or somewhere there, very far east because they were, they look very uh, sort of, um, how could I say, Exotic anyway. They didn't. We didn't. We couldn't communicate with any language or anything like that. I had a feeling that they never been in Western Russia either. They have been very, living very primitive uh, conditions. But they learned surprisingly soon in the cruising box why the guys were cruising there. And so I got about I would say about half a year later when I had been. I experienced the German army, so the opposite came there, and I was involved with them again. And uh, as I always been, I had not have been so much uh, in, uh, involved in politics, so I never felt guilty that I, I made both. I didn't serve my own country only, but I was I took everything that was available. When I was young, I was a teenager and so on. That I was worn, of course, but they were, it was worn mainly by people who worked like outdoors, like policemen and guys who worked in a harbor uh, or in the woods. They needed something warm, so they had leather. So it meant that all the guys which had leather, they were the type of men which I adored. I remember I I got the opportunity sometimes to try on some of those kind of people's leathers and I felt so excited that I had the same jacket on me which he wear every day. It was fascinating to me. I got interested in the realistic style which was I mean, what they, all the old masters used, so when, for instance, Leonardo da Vinci and, and Michelangelo and so on, they, their realism sort of took me completely. I was fascinated about how real they could make people look in their old, old uh, technical styles. And it followed the same also, I mean, until uh, I would say Rembrandt was one of my favorites with his uh, warm, brownish colors and, and lighting, all that, but also because of his uh, figures, his, his uh, uh, way of, of you know, describe the personality. But I, I, I don't know how much they really 
influenced in my own style in drawing because to me most, uh, most important was, uh, was just to show the muscles, I mean those uh, surface <laughs> things more and exaggerate them. Uh, so I couldn't say that, that I had been influenced by, by some of the great masters. It was too insulting to them. Here are some typical examples of my work. They are my work here, for instance, this one is what I talked before about gays being together, feeling happy and, and, and feeling uh, sort of proud being what they are. I made that in purpose to give the expression how gays could feel. We call it the brotherhood. Here's another one. <laughs> Again, from the same image, the contact with, with guys who look, in my opinion, they, they look handsome and masculine and uh, relaxed, enjoying what they are doing. Here is one more of the contacts with two guys, which I want to show that, that they can feel happy together and they are right to feel happy together so in a way i would have say that i want to purpose influence people and also maybe influence the straight people to understand and accept the beauty and, and uh, the rights what gays should have though inspired by other artists such as paul cadmus and acquaintance Tom's vision is truly his own. Few other visionaries so vividly depict an abundantly sexual world. Albeit exaggerated, this is a world where all things are possible. In following his erotic yearnings by means of his artistic talent, Tom has created imagery that transforms the real world of sexual oppression and guilt from which he emerged into a radiant, free world of male affection and lust. Here, no man need fear scorn or rejection. Inadvertently, Tom has been influential in providing gay men worldwide a fully masculine, fully homosexual role model concept. Tom of Finland is truly part of our gay heritage. His many images of unapologetic homoerotica stand as a testament to the indomitable spirit of our gay nature. <laughs>